everyone, Andy Raffel from eTechnics.com and today we're looking at the Z490 Aorus Pro AX. Let's do this. The Virtuoso RGB Wireless SE headset from Corsair. With a sleek premium lightweight design, comfortable memory foam ear cups and subtle RGB lighting, it doesn't look like your typical gaming headset. With a detachable broadcast grade microphone, patented slipstream wireless technology and tuned 50mm neodymium premium drivers, it's simply the best headset Corsair have ever created. Find out more by clicking the link in the description below. Now before I get started I want to make it clear we are actually filming this video before the CPUs have been tested. We will still be adding in all the overclock stuff and all of the performance, both stock and overclock at the end of this video, so definitely stick around for that. But let's talk about the board. Starting with the Pro Series. So the Pro Series has always kind of been that sweet spot for Gigabyte for offering up the latest generation with some of the latest features, mainly kind of from the chipset, nothing above and beyond that generally speaking, but for a pretty reasonable price point. So talking about the price point, this actually comes in at $269.99 and $299.99 uh, in pounds. Now compared to kind of its predecessor, the Z390 Aorus Pro Wi-Fi, that came in a little bit cheaper. So there's about a $75 price difference. Now, I know obviously we are getting Wi-Fi AX, but is there anything else that the board's offering above and beyond that to kind of make the jump from Z390 up to Z490, at least in terms of this board, really kind of worth it? So let's start by looking at the design. I definitely say the $75 kind of extra premium is definitely worth it because just looking at it, they really have stepped up their game from Z390. It just looks a little bit more premium. Things are a little bit more covered. It just I don't know, has a bit more to it. So Gigabyte have definitely stepped up their game in terms of the design kind of element of it. But does that translate to features as well? What kind of stuff do we get on the board? So it doesn't translate to lighting first and foremost. There isn't a huge amount on here. It is quite subtle, but that might work for some people. We have a little bit of kind of RGB up on the rear IO cover, which does stem into the back plate. Uh, and we also have a little bit on the audio, but that's pretty much it. I would have liked to have maybe seen some over the kind of PCH chipset, but like I say, most people probably aren't gonna to be too fussed with it. If you wanna add a little bit more lighting, then there are some options for that as well. And that comes in the way of two RGB headers as well as two addressable RGB headers. So you could add hubs to this, lighting strips, uh, RGB fans, literally the world is your oyster. So carrying on with the design, let's take a look at the CPU socket. It's pretty open and that's thanks to the fact that the top M.2 slot doesn't actually have a heatsink cover on it. So it gives you kind of quite a lot of room to breathe. Now I'm not expecting anyone to buy the Aorus Pro AX and you know, really try and push their hardware to the limits. You have the master and the extreme for that kind of stuff, which does come at a premium and we have got video content on that. But the CPU socket, you're not really gonna have any problem with airflow, large CPU coolers, anything like that. Now, when it comes to the phases on here, we do have a 12 plus one phase digital PWM design using 55 amp phases. So there's still pretty ample power, but compared to the likes of the master, which has 90 amp phases, you know, it's a bit of a step down, but it is a little bit cheaper. So definitely horses for courses. Now getting power directly to that CPU socket, we have an eight pin and a four pin. There's no shielding or armor or anything like that on it, but it's definitely gonna be enough power to you know, do some light overclocking. Well, as far as I know, based on rumors, because like I say, the time of filming this, haven't even, well, touched the CPUs yet. So yeah, a little bit of a tricky one. It is also worth noting that all of the power connectors on here, the 24 pin, the eight pin, and the four pin, all have solid pins, which is Gigabyte's kind of technology to basically give you the best possible connection to give you the cleanest power and the most stable power, especially when pushing your hardware to the limits. In terms of the cooling, there are two heat sinks around the CPU cooler. We have the one along the top and then the one down the side, which kind of spans into this bulky sort of rear IO area. Now, it looks nice. It looks like it's gonna do the job. It has direct touch and the fins array stuff, all the kind of good gigabyte stuff that they brand out there. But the thing that really annoys me, and I had the same gripe with the master, is the thermal pads that are used. Why couldn't they have used black ones? I'm hoping that this is addressed in the retail version because like I mentioned in the video of the master as well, it just kind of stands out a little bit. Just seeing this kind of thermal pad spewing out sort of beneath it. I don't know, maybe it's just me. Let me know what you think in the comment section below. Now the main kind of step up in terms of heat sinks for Z490 uh, on the Aorus Pro compared to the Z390 is definitely this lower kind of portion. I mean, two out of the uh, three M.2 slots are covered with kind of heat sink shielding and it all sort of, you know, merges into the PCH chipset. 
I guess on the Z390 Aorus Pro, it just looked a little bit sparse, a little bit bare. This definitely looks a little bit nicer and I think is gonna command that extra premium that Gigabyte are trying to sort of get from you for moving up to Z490 and going for a board like this. Now, in terms of memory support, uh, this is a bit of a tricky one because they claim uh, this can support up to 128 gig of DDR4, 5,000 megahertz memory. As far as I know, there's no one even out there on the grand kind of scale, you know, G Skill, Corsair, whoever, actually developing 5,000 megahertz memory. Pretty much the sticking point is 4,400. But it says it can support it, but that doesn't just come down to, you know, saying a board supports it. A lot of it is really gonna come down to the processor, the chipset, and kind of how far the memory controller will allow you to push things. So it's gonna be interesting to look at that. It's also worth noting that all four of the DIMM slots do have metal armor shielding on there. So basically you're gonna, you know, alleviate any interference and uh, hopefully in theory that should increase memory latency as well uh, when talking to the processor and as well as the chipset. For all your storage needs, there's six SATA ports, nothing out of the ordinary. There are three M.2 slots, which is nice to see on a board of kind of this price point. It would have been nice, I guess, to have had the first slot, um, you know, supporting a, a heat sink of some kind. And the reason I say that is, the kind of support for the M.2s doesn't just end with, you can put PCIe Gen 3 in there. This board has all the technology and all the functionality to, to support Gen 4 when it arrives. Now, what I mean by that is this board is socket 1200, so it is supporting Comet Lake S, but in the very near future, hopefully sometime this year, probably towards kind of Computex in September, we are gonna be looking at the new processors, which is gonna be Rocket Lake, which will support PCI Express Gen 4. Now I know I can hear all the AMD fanboys out there like, oh my God, a little bit late, isn't it? But this is kind of the situation that they're in. But it's nice to see that the board is ready to go. So you don't have to go out and buy a new motherboard. Gigabyte have pretty much got you covered there. Just buy the CPU, replace your Comet Lake S for your Rocket Lake and off you go. You can have blistering fast speeds when it comes to the M.2 as well as PCIe Gen 4 for the expansion slots. So let's talk about them just a little bit. So there's three X16 slots. The top one is X16 and runs at X16. The second one runs at X8 and the third one runs at X4. Now, if you are utilizing SLI or Crossfire, not that you'd want to, uh, you will actually see that the bandwidth is shared between the first slot and also the second slot. So they're both dropped down to X8 speeds. In theory, that's not really gonna make a, a world of difference. I mean, if you're running two 2080 Ti's, I mean, how much bandwidth are you really going to lose? And are you really going to buy a board like this if you are running two 2080 Ti's? Yeah, go figure. In terms of connectivity on the board, you have the kind of usual affair that we've sort of, you know, grown to expect on Z490. We have USB 3.2 Gen 2 Type-C. We have Gen 1. We have USB 2.0. There's a TPM connector. There's a Q-Flash BIOS button. Nothing really too out of the ordinary, but everything you'd need to get going at blistering fast kind of connection speeds to your USB devices, Although saying that, there is one little thing on this board that kind of makes up for it. And I'm guessing this is why it's that little bit more expensive. It has a Thunderbolt 3 connector. Now, while that doesn't mean that it ha you, know, you can connect Thunderbolt 3 devices in, you will have to buy a separate add-in card, but the board actually supports it. And as far as I know, Gigabyte do uh, their own kind of you know, add-in Thunderbolt card. So just pop that into one of the PCI Express slots, plug it in, and away you go. 40 gigabit per second. Now around the rear on the IO, it is incorporated into the design, which you'd kind of expect at this price. It does feature a kind of subtle Aorus branding, not that you're ever gonna see it because it's gonna be at the back of your case. There's plenty of USB connectors, including 3.2 Gen 2 Type A ports and a Type C port. It has Intel Wi-Fi 6AX201, as we've come to expect with Z490, and also has Bluetooth 5.1. There's Intel 2.5G Ethernet and all your audio jacks with optical SP diff are situated here as well. So there we go. I mean, hopefully that's given you a kind of, you know, good rundown on the board. And as I mentioned at the end of this video, we will be showing how it overclocks as well as them glorious benchmarks. So yeah, I can't really comment too much right now, but I'm hoping to actually have more content out on launch day where we can kind of sit down and analyze the, the data a little bit and see how this compares with other boards as well. But uh, for now, I guess I'll leave you with the overclocks and the benchmarks. And uh, yeah, let me know what you think of the board. I'll see you in the next one, guys. See you later.